What's up guys, today I have 15 hacks that every editor should know. Some of these are in Final Cut, some of them are outside of Final Cut, but let's just dive right into it. My first tip for you is all about fine tuning your soundbite edits. Sometimes when you're trying to excise a section out of a soundbite and sandwich two pieces together, it can sound clipped. I'm very passionate about anime. And the challenge is that sometimes when you trim frame by frame, it's actually too much and the audio doesn't sound perfect. Here's a hack you might not have known. You can actually edit your audio in smaller increments than singular frames in Final Cut Pro. Just select the clip you want to trim up and select expand audio components. Now you can see that my clip has been broken up into two parts, the video and the audio. They are still perfectly in sync. But what I can do is grab the end of that audio clip and trim in smaller increments than video frames. And then I can really fine tune that sound so it sounds perfect. I'm very passionate about anime. Once you're happy, you can just right click that clip again and collapse the audio. My next hack is all about finding balance between your music bed and any speaking voices in your videos. Sometimes when you have people talking on camera, over a music bed, the voice and the music can really compete. And typically the solution is just to dial down your music a lot. So you can make sure your speaker is loud and proud over that music. But I'm going to show you a hack where you can find a lot more balance between the two. So I'm going to select this music track and in the audio inspector, I'm going to enable equalization and I'm going to hit this icon here to open up my mixer. And basically what I want to do is just bring down the mid ranges a bit on this music cut because our speaker's voice is also in the mid range. This way they won't be competing. I needed a job and somebody was hiring in marketing and I had experience writing and doing light graphic design. I needed a job and somebody was hiring in marketing and I had experience writing and doing light graphic design. My next hack is faking a multicam shot even when you only had one camera on set. This one is super easy. In your browser window, just select your singular clip, right click and select new multicam clip. When the new multicam clip appears in your browser, double click on it. Now on the top left of your clip, you're gonna see these two icons and angle one. Hit this little down arrow and select add angle. Now you've got an empty track that's just appeared. Select your original clip, hold down the option key and drag it into the new angle. You can see my clips are still perfectly synced up. Now in my viewer, I'm going to make sure I can view my angles and I'm going to select either one of these clips. Let's select the new bottom one and I'm going to pump up the scale and play with the position. Now let's head back to our main timeline. I'm gonna drop that multicam clip in my timeline. And now I can just cut between these two angles as much as I want and it looks like a multicam shoot. My next tip I might say isn't really a hack as much as a really underutilized feature in Final Cut Pro. Let's say I wanted to take this fun drone shot and really make it move to the beat of the music track underneath. What I'm going to do is look at the waveforms of my audio track, but select the video clip. And what I'm going to do, select it on the video clip, not the audio clip, is I'm going to add a standard marker throughout my video clip, not too close together, wherever I can see a peak in the audio waveforms on my music track. Now that I've got my markers in place, selected on that video clip still, let's head over to the retime menu and select jump cut at markers. And I'm going to select 30 frames here. And now my long drone shot is moving right along with the music beat. I love this hack. It just adds a little spice to your videos when you've got a great cut of music and a really nice long shot. And it's so effortless to do this. My next hack is for when you get this dreaded error when you're trying to share out a final cut. If it tells you that there's an error that occurred at a specific frame, what Final Cut is telling you is that the clip that lands at that frame in your timeline is maybe corrupted or there's something wrong with it. But how do you know which clip in your whole huge timeline lands at this particular frame? Let me show you. Just head up to Final Cut Pro and your top menu and select settings. Under general, where it says time display, just drop down to frames. Run your playhead through your timeline, keeping an eye on the running numbers at the bottom of your viewer to 
you find the point that coincides with the frame that Final Cut indicated to you was causing the error. Whatever clip sits at that position is probably the one that's problematic. What usually works for me is that I just delete that clip and drop it in again from the browser and my export will work. If that really doesn't work, you might have to find an alternate clip. There might be something like totally corrupted with the media file. My next tip for you is when you're doing a screen record and you need to simulate somebody typing an email or a search query or something like that, but maybe you're not the best typer to get it perfect every time, here's my hack for you. What I do is type out everything I want the text to say, then I start my screen record. And watch this, I just hold down the delete key to backspace all of my letters. Then I stop my screen record, bring it into Final Cut, and reverse the speed on the clip. And this way it looks like it's typed perfectly. My next hack for you is when you're really in a pinch and you need a voiceover, you can actually use your iPhone to record voiceovers and it does a pretty good job. Just open up the voice memo app that comes with your iPhone and record your voiceovers. But there is a challenge with this, let me demonstrate. People always pop their P's when they're recording VOs with their iPhone. Let's play that back. People always pop their P's when they're recording VOs with their iPhone. You can really hear how those P's are popped. Let me show you the hack to reduce that popping. You're first gonna wanna start recording on your iPhone, and then you're literally gonna take a sock and cover that microphone. Make sure it's nice and snug, and now let's do it. Stop popping your P's, people. Stop popping your P's, people. Definitely so much better, right? But if you do end up with popped peas, let me show you a hack for getting rid of those because there is no popper stopper filter in Final Cut Pro. Let's lay in our voiceover and take a listen one more time. People always pop their peas when they're recording VOs with their iPhone. And now what I'm gonna do is enable voice isolation here and crank it way up. People always pop their peas when they're recording VOs with their iPhone. I have found that voice isolation is awesome for reducing popping on peas in your voiceovers. My next set of hacks all relates to working with logos and graphics in Final Cut Pro. Let's say I was working with this Chanel logo here, but I really needed it to be white so it was more visible over my video clip. You don't need to bring this into an image editing app like Photoshop or Pixelmator. You can do what you need to do right here in Final Cut Pro. Just select the logo in your timeline, head down to color in your effects browser, and apply the colorize filter. Then you can just remap the blacks to white and then drag that color swatch over the whites and dial up the intensity. And there you go, you have a white logo. And typically you might wanna make things white, but you can really make them any color. My next hack is for when you do have a solid color black or white logo, but it's not on a transparent background. Again, you could bring this into Illustrator or Pixelmator or Photoshop and fix it there. But if it's just a black and white situation, you can just use a blend modes to correct it. So if you're on a black background, change the blend mode from normal to add. If you're on a white background, change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And there you go, perfectly cut out. Before I get to my next hack, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know. Give me that big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. My next hack though is for this situation. We've all been there where you're trying to nab a logo off the internet you think it's transparent, but you got tricked. I got you covered. All you have to do in this situation is head down to your effects browser to masking and keying, grab the Luma here, and then you're gonna play with these handles here until you've got the logo cut out. Now I'm gonna hit invert. Now I've still got a checkerboard pattern here. All I have to do now is head down to matte tools and I'm gonna bring down all these levels. And then yeah, I've still got this kind of crappy looking edge around it. I'm gonna reach for the shrink and expand slider and just kind of shrink this up until we are looking super clean, perfect. The next hack that every editor needs to know is how to retrieve video files from websites like this one here, YouTube. Now, I cannot tell you in this video exactly how to go about it, 
because it's against YouTube's terms of service and I actually talked about it on my other channel and got dinged by YouTube for it. But it is something you may need to know how to do as an editor because it's not uncommon for a client to say, hey, I want to grab this shot out of this finished video that we did in the past, but I don't have the video file. All I have is the link to it on our website or on Vimeo or on YouTube or somewhere else. Can you get it for me? And there is a way to do it. But like I said, I can't talk about it in this video. So I'm going to direct you to my website, jenjagger.com, to the blog section where there is an article and accompanying video that shows you how to achieve this if you're interested. All right, let's head back into Final Cut for another great hack for editors. My next hack for you is all about making the colors of your 3D text pop and be vibrant. If you change the color of your 3D text here in Final Cut Pro, you may notice that the color of your text isn't as vibrant as the color swatch that you selected in your inspector window. Why is this? The default substance when you add 3D text here in Final Cut is plastic. So it's reflective and the colors are not that vibrant. If you really want a true red 3D letter, all you have to do is open the substance menu and just select generic. And now that text is exactly the color of your swatch or you can even fill it with a gradient. You may notice under this option that image is grayed out. This is my next hack. Let's hop on over to Apple Motion. I'm gonna show you how to wrap your text in any pattern that you want. You probably know that in both Final Cut and Apple Motion under Substance, there are many different materials and textures you can select to wrap around your text. But did you know you can also bring in your own materials? Let me show you how. Under substance, let's go back to generic. And now when we go to surface, we see color like we saw in Final Cut, we see gradient, but now image is enabled. I'm gonna bring an image of a pattern from my finder and drop it in my project pane. Now I'm gonna select that text again. And in this image well, I'm gonna drag that pattern. And then I'm going to disable that image in my project pane. And now you can see my text is wrapped in this yellow and white chevron pattern. And then I can make a lot of modifications to the way that pattern lays on my letters. And my last editing hack for you is also here in Apple Motion. You know, us as editors, we're not graphic designers. So we don't typically pay as much attention to typography as we should. But if we want our text in our videos to really look professional, you really need to focus in on the kerning between the letters in your text. Let's take a look at this text. I find that this is often a problem with numbers in particular. So I've got some numerical digits here, but look at the space between the one and the two and the two and the three. There's like a huge gap between these two and it looks like the N and the G might be a little bit far apart as well. So I'm gonna really perfect the spacing between these letters. So what I'm going to do is zoom way in on my canvas and I'm going to draw some ruler lines in the center of my canvas. So I'm going to make the first one land at positive 10 and the second one land at negative 10. And now selected on my text in my project pane in the inspector, I'm going to play with the offset. So those ruler lines land between my first two letters here. Then I'm gonna put my cursor right after the E here in my inspector window. And then I'm going to grab the kerning slider and increase the kerning so the spacing is even. Now I'm going to play with that offset again to move my entire line of text and check between the next two. I'm gonna put my cursor after the V and adjust my kerning again. Let's play with that offset again and jump between the one and two because this is really where I think you're gonna see the difference. I'm gonna cue up my cursor after the one and I'm going to reduce that kerning. So now those numbers are definitely evenly spaced. You can set your ruler lines to whichever point you want. If you want things more spaced out, make that gap bigger. If you want them tighter, make it smaller. So that's the kind of detail you want to go to when you're really working with text and you want it to look super professional. You guys, which hack was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos for you and I'll see you again.